Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This is the show where I talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Preacher. A very, very good episode that picks up right where, well, yesterday's episode left off, where we had, like, the cowboy walking towards Jesse. I was like, I was like, I was like, how is Jesse going to get out of this? Is he going to wake up and this is going to be some nightmare or something? It's like, no, it's really happening. He just got extremely lucky with that bus coming or that vehicle coming by and catching a bullet, which immediately my brain would have like, I would have thought it would have passed through it. But I guess like those bullets don't keep going. They're like regular bullets. That moment they make impact, they stop. I mean, they can. I mean, normally a bullet can pass through you, but I guess once it hits through a body, even if it passes through you, it's lost a lot of lo momentum and it will just stop anyway. So I'm guessing the same thing applies. But I, I guess because in my mind, it's like that those bullets can explode body parts. So it's like I would have assumed. But nevertheless, just there's like a gun association nearby. And he's like, get him. And like all of them fire at him at once. But it turns out to be nothing. He got hit by a truck. Nothing. He just bounces back like it's nothing. And even Jesse's like, holy shit nothing stopping this dude and he ends up killing a lot of people like all the people that shot at him he start going from room to room even killing people too it's like holy crap and jesse and them are hiding from him and hands down the part i was like wait what and even they're kind of like pausing and looking like what the fuck when that dude literally an arm pulling off goes to the vending machine he's like i wanted root beer but i got ginger ale and jesse's like could you please can you be quiet he's like do you have quarters um Poor dude. I mean, I don't know if this tank actually killed him. I mean, he bashed the dude's head against the um, vending machine, but I don't know if he actually killed him. I don't know if he went on a spree and killed everyone else in the hotel, too, or did he just stop once he found out Jesse and the others had left, so. But they decided to track down Fjord because it was, in fact, him that, like, Cassidy saw on the TV, like, that whole, like, oh, come see this mystical person. It's like, I knew from just the way he looked. Like, from the little bit we saw of him, like, from the back, as well as kind of a look from the side, it's like, there's got to be Fior. Um, we kind of found out what he's been doing, because it's, you know, been a couple of days since the whole Anvil situation. Basically, he went off to a casino, and it's kind of sad. He ends up, like, killing himself over and over again, but sadly, each time he just keeps coming back. Uh, but then he kind of gets caught up in this whole situation if he does it in front of a whole bunch of people and obviously people think it's a magic and he's like, oh, oh, amazing. And so he does it over and over again, killing himself in different ways and coming back like it's nothing. I mean, because the sad thing is, it's like, oh, that's so, I mean, obviously you might as well profit off of it. But the thing is, like, you know, the reason why he's doing it is out of sadness. It's like, well, this makes it easier because it's like. Even if he comes back, it's still the fact is that he kills himself, and I guess it makes him feel better. I guess on some level, maybe he's hoping the next time he won't come back. I mean, it's like, you know, it's just like, he's like, oh, I'm giving you entertainment and stuff like that. But this way, I don't have to constantly come up with different, like, you guys are like, yeah, like, I don't know. Like, maybe it helps feed into his sadness or something. It's like, ha, 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 yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. Like, he's just in a self-destructive mood because he lost the Blanc. And it's kind of interesting because he refers to him as his best friends. I don't know, like, I, like, you know, especially later on in the season, like, I, I just assumed they were a couple, but I don't, I don't know if he meant, like, oh, we're best friends and a couple because Cassie's like, oh, did you, you slept together too? He's like, yeah. It's like, our friendship was legendary and stuff like that. So I'm like, maybe they never really identified themselves as a couple. It's like, hey, we're best friends. We sleep together and stuff like that. It's whatever. So who needs labels and stuff like that, I guess? Like, I mean, defining a relationship and stuff like that is like, we're best friends. That's all there is to it. So I guess so. Or maybe for them, it was just like a, we're best friends and we had sex. Like, it's not even like a relationship thing. It's just like, we're that tight. We're that cool. So maybe that's it too. But nonetheless, um, the only person that can call off uh, the cowboy is Fior. And interestingly enough, it turns out Jesse's heard of him too. Like, he's like the saint of killers. And Jesse's like... No, he's a ghost story. So that, it isn't just that Mike knew about him. It's not like not Mike knew more than he left. It's like, no, it seems like he's kind of a ghost story amongst preachers and ministers. Maybe it's a story he heard a long time ago from his dad. Or maybe it's a situation where um, just learning more about the Bible and stuff like that. Um, Jesse knows about him from that way. Either way, it's just like, it seems like amongst the priest, preacher, uh minister group of people like they know about him and they heard whispers of him so 
still, like I said, we still don't know the whole backstory of who he is, like how he got to be what he is. But what Fior did say is like, oh yeah, he's kind of like almost like a hell spawn that he isn't human. He's just something else at this point. So that's as far as we've kind of really gone on that. But it turns out the reason why he's able to constantly find them is because it because of Jesse using Genesis, which makes sense because they were hiding, but he couldn't find, he didn't look like he, except he looked like he was kind of sitting in but he couldn't really find him. And then Jesse was telling him to do with his arm blown off. Hey, be quiet. And then, then the guy, then the cowboy turned around. So it's like he can sense anytime Jesse uses Genesis. So. I mean, this episode had so much to it on many different levels because it's like, for one, um, I love the whole Cassidy and Fior thing, where like Fior and Cassidy are hanging out and everything, um, doing drugs. Uh, sadly, he ends up ODing the first time. It's like, okay, that was heroin. So it's like, I guess they worked their way down to other stuff, less, you know, heavy stuff. And they actually hang around and have fun talking and stuff like that. Foreskin conversation comes up again. And he's like, oh, might be even in this ice cream we're eating. And it's like, oh, yeah. Uh, must be why it's so creamy and they're laughing and stuff. Immediately, it didn't come about, but I was like, huh, he has a crush on Cassidy now, doesn't he? Because the way he was looking at him, but it's like, apparently, I mean, maybe he does, maybe it's, maybe it's kind of a situation of like, once again, not even a crush thing, just like a, I haven't talked to someone in a long time. I mean, even Cassidy is like, yeah, he just needed someone to talk to, and it's just like, I mean, you gotta give, give it, uh, to Cassidy kind of doing all that in two hours and 40 odd minutes. Pretty impressive. Uh, but then again, it's Cassidy. Cassidy's pretty fun-loving. Like, you immediately like him. Not everyone does, but, I mean, Jesse and him immediately clicked, so. No, I mean, this is obviously Cassidy's way of trying to make up for the whole Tammy situation last episode, so. Sadly for him, that wasn't enough to deal with the whole, uh, cowboy situation, because he's like, nah, Jesse has to be stopped, because it turns out that it isn't just, like, I was wondering... Because it, it seems like he's going after Genesis specifically. It's not like... Because I was wondering, like, where... I thought it was like, oh, you convinced him to kill Jesse. Like, not Gen... Like, and, and that's still not something we don't understand either. Is how Genesis' powers isn't able to work on him. It's able to work on angels, but not him. Why? Once again, I threw out last episode, maybe there's something inside of him that's similar to Genesis that gives him the powers he had. So, I mean, kind of the, being the supernatural gunslinger he is, maybe that's what that is. Um, or just something else. Because the fact of the matter is, Daryl, he was hired to kill Genesis. I'm guessing killing Jesse on top of it. Like, I mean, obviously, it goes hand in hand, but it's also because Jesse's a preacher, so I'm thinking, you know, as we know from his past, he has a problem with preachers. But it makes me wonder, like, if he kills Jesse, what happens then? Does Genesis automatically die with Jesse, or would Genesis leave Jesse's body and find a new host? Does it pass on from person to person like that? Or is it like the moment it's... No, because it can't be, because the moment... I mean, then again, it's like, he's kind of an exception, because he apparently it's not just like, oh, he can kill anything. So, moment he, like... Shoots Jesse, Genesis dies at the same time. Because the thing is, like, anytime Genesis was in another person, that person exploded, so... So for Fior, he's like, I can't trust Jesse because Jesse bluntly said, like, I will keep using Genesis whenever I feel like it. When I feel like deem it necessary. Um, because a thing, too, in this episode kind of caught my attention. It does seem like he has forgotten. This is also about saving Eugene, pulling him from hell. I mean, because he's asking Fior, but Fior's like, I'm not never going back in. It's like, is it that bad of a place? And it's like, yeah. I mean, we've only saw a fraction of hell. And once again, we don't know if that's what hell looks like for everyone. Like, that's always how hell's kind of interpreted. Like, you're reliving, like, the worst moment of your life. I assume with Eugene, it's the whole Tracy situation. He's reliving that over and over again. Maybe it's actually something else. But we saw what happened with the cowboy reliving his moment over and over again. It's like... So is that just specifically tied to him because it's a special place in hell specifically designed for him, or is it like everyone's hell is reflected like that? You would think being who he, being what or whoever the hell he is, like that he'd get a special place. But I mean, we just kind of have to wait and see. But um, like I say, it does seem like it slips his mind. Like at the end of season one, he's like, "Don't worry, don't think I haven't forgotten about." It. But then he thinks about it again because Fior is like, "The fact of the matter is, like, you, you can't use Genesis for good." It's a, an abomination that should never be, and like, oh, you think you can use it for good and stuff like that? It's like, well, what good did you do that boy, Eugene, that you sent to hell? And then just, he's like, right, Eugene. And like, I think he does legitimately keep forgetting about it. He's still caught up in, oh, trying to track down God. And it's like, it's for his own reasons and stuff like that. It's a situation of balancing, like, 
I think Jesse kind of has a tendency to forget, like, he has a tendency to be selfish, like, a lot of stuff, it's like, oh, stuff with Anvil, he wanted to save people, but that was just for his own reasons, like, did he really care enough about people to want to save them, or was it his own situation of, like, no, I have to be the shepherd to, uh, to bring this flock to the light. It's all about me, 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 me type of thing. It's like you want to give Jesse the benefit of the doubt constantly. Like I said last episode and the way Cassidy said last episode, Jesse does try to do the right thing. It just not always works out that way. So, But another thing, too, is the whole situation of how the whole Anvil situation. They know about it being destroyed, but they don't know why it all played out this way. Jesse doesn't know that it is, in fact, kind of his fault because of doing the whole looking for God, like trying to get answers from God situation and finding out God's missing and stuff. People will lost their minds in Anvil. So it's kind of his fault and everything, but he doesn't know that. So they're like, oh, something went wrong in my our town and stuff like that. Um, it ended up having a very interesting conversation with um, Tulip because Tulip ends up talking about Walter, Walter being the only family she had left. Like when we saw Tulip as a little girl, like her dad was gone and her mom was in jail at that time so it's like i mean we still don't even know if her mom's her mom might be dead by now since she said like walter was the last family she had not unless her mom is still locked up or whatever but in the like she's like walter was always drunk always falling over things but the fact of the matter she has one distinct memory of him coming to school for her dressed in the suit what made what made it matter is no matter even if he was drunk even if walter had his problems he still tried for her he tried with he came with a suit and everything and that meant a lot for her because you know we don't know too much about the old hairs but it seems like i mean considering her family situation the little bit we know about it doesn't seem like it was that much of a good situation I mean, hence why, like, child services got called in the first place. But, um, I guess, like, you know, the fact of the matter is he tried. And that that meant the most to her in the world. You know, he was kind of, like, the only family she had left. Which kind of pushes Jesse to be like, hey, like, uh, let's get married. Which she was all for it at first. I mean, at first she's kind of like, you always said that marriage was just a stupid idea. It's like, no, I didn't. You're the one that said that. She's like, uh-huh. And it comes up later on. It's like, yeah, you were right. Marriage is a stupid idea. I, I didn't say that. You did. She's like, well, I, I'm right. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, it makes you wonder, too, like, if they find out what happened in Anvil, will they ever find out the truth? Maybe if they come across God, God's like, oh, yeah, the reason why Anvil, because everything that you did. Wait, what? You know, because, you know, like, I want to know how much of an impact will that have on Jesse? Will it slow him down? Will it stop him at all? Even though his town's blown up, people he's known are dead like it hasn't stopped him it's just kind of like once again kind of going back to that point of like uh, jesse's kind of selfish like he kind of goes his own way like everything else kind of falls to the wayside but it, like i said he does try and it does seem like he does care because it did hit him hard that anvil is going because like yeah it may not have cared about everyone there but that's still a town full of people that are no longer alive i mean that we know of i mean but they're like it's most likely unlikely anyone survived that situation so but um how would Tulip react finding out? Like, as we know, like, the last person of her family is going, and if, if it find, if she finds out that it was actually Jesse's fault that it happened, how would she feel then? Also, Cassidy finding out about the whole marriage thing. And it's, it's so sad because you still see it kind of hitting him hard, and he's just kind of like, no, it's meant to be, it's meant to be, you know? And it's like, it's meant to be and everything. It's like, oh, freaking, freaking um, Cassidy, dude. Just, it's heartbreaking. Part of you almost like, it's like, man, I hope you find love again soon so that this is no, because things are going to get complicated, especially because he has to keep another secret. It's like, oh yeah, I have to keep the secret from Jesse that me and Tulip slept together. Also have to keep a secret that this dude that she met named a guy that she knows, Gary, she ended up killing him in her hotel room. That was pretty brutal. He's like choking her and slamming her all around, but then she like kicks his ass. It's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I can't have you calling Victor. Apparently that's someone, someone from her work history bass. Um, probably not someone that Jesse knows because she's, because uh, she's not even telling Jesse about it. So, but uh, that was pretty brutal fighting. That pretty brutal fight. Like Tulip is a freaking badass, dude. But uh, this seems like this will definitely be heading in the direction of like let's learn more about Tulip's past. Like you know, because we don't know actually what's the time frame of Tulip and Jesse meeting up again. Like. Maybe this is between, maybe this is like sometime after the whole Carlos situation and they kind of went their separate ways. Maybe it's in that time, um, time frame, or maybe this is someone she met before she met up with Jesse again. Cause we don't know how long it was between like her getting taken off with child services to like 
them being together. Like, we don't know where that time frame is. Like, did they stay together because they went to school and everything together? Or did she move, like, did she go, go, like, go, 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 like, super far away? You know, and the circumstances around that, so. It, but it definitely seems like someone that she's avoiding. I don't know whether, you know, because she's, because she didn't even let Gary know. She's like, I got something to do. It's like, yo, it could, you could be, like, I guess you, you wouldn't really care to tell him, like, oh, I'm getting married, but at the same time, it's like, the fact is you didn't say anything like that makes me wonder, because you didn't want Gary to know, because you didn't want Gary to end up telling Victor, so it's like, there must be something there. It might be a situation where Victor's like, yep, Tulip, you're my property type of situation, because it's like, oh, I, he's been looking for you for a very long time, so it might be a worker thing, but it seems like it might be like, a, oh, you're my property thing, and I'm trying to get you back. It, that's where my mind is immediately, so we'll kind of see. Unfortunately for Tulip, it's like, Jesse's like, hey, let's, we got to go to uh, New Orleans because it's like, what does God, the one thing we know about God, he likes jazz, and it's like, you know, that's the heart of uh, New Orleans, but that's also where uh, we learn that's where Victor's operation is from, Louisiana, so... Unfortunately for Tulip, it means like she's going to be in Victor's backyard, so she's going to probably try everything she can to probably, maybe, I don't know, like, especially because it's like, yeah, this is the plan, this is all there is to it, so it's like, oh, because she's like, hey, we still got this whole, like, let's search for God situation, so, but the fact is, Gary is another secret that uh, Cassidy has to keep from Jesse, it's like, and they're building up, you know? Because you know, it's like, that's his best mate and everything, and he doesn't want, you know, it's like, he doesn't want to keep these lies between them. Especially the first one, just because you see how hard it is because of the fact that he has feelings for Tulip, too. So, it just makes things super complicated. But, I mean, like, this whole situation with the cowboy cannot be stopped now. Mainly because it's like, well, Fior had him kill him, so it's like... Because he was just, I need to get out of this situation. I need to get out. And so he hired the um, cowboy to kill him. So now there is literally no one left to stop the cowboy. Both people who set up the contract are dead now. So, because the thing is, like, I mean, a question that comes across my mind, too, like, it, we I probably will never get an answer to is why didn't he go back home? Is it because he would have been in so much trouble? Or is it because the phone is gone now that it's impossible to go back home? I mean, it makes you wonder, did they just leave the phone behind? Like, did they bother not? doing anything with that because the last time we saw it was still in the church and jesse just walked away from it so it's probably blown up now but um i mean i might also just be the point of like well the blanc's not here so who cares i don't want to go back home because home meant nothing i mean he was like you know he knew like for him he's like i knew peace and tranquility beforehand but then like that all changed the moment i came to earth and everything and jesse's final words to him was using genesis as like find peace and i guess this was you know that's the thing with genesis a lot of stuff can be taken literally or metaphorically it's like it makes you wonder if Jesse had not said he'd keep using Genesis, maybe, maybe he would have been able to call it off, but I don't know. I mean, for, for the Cowboy, we do find out, like, what he gets out of this. It's like he gets his he gets his wife and his daughter back, so that's even more motivation to, like, no, nah, I'm not letting this preacher go, so. Also, an interesting thing came up, too. It's like, well, angels are from heaven, so what happens to them when they die? And even Fiora's like, I don't know. So I'm guessing he kind of got an answer to that now. I mean, we still don't, but it makes you wonder, is it kind of like a purgatory type of situation where it's like everything's supernatural once it dies, it goes here? Because, like, what happens to Cassidy if he dies? Like, is there an afterlife for vampires? Or other things? I mean, we don't even know what other things exist in a preacher universe. I mean, obviously, if you've read the comic books, you know, but obviously not having read the comic books, I don't know, so... So far, he's, like, the only other supernatural thing we've met. We haven't even met demons yet, which begs the question, like, is that what the Saint of Killers actually is? Maybe he's actually a demon, I mean. I mean, we don't actually even know what angels really look like in this world. Like, do they just look the way they do? Or do they have, like, a uh, some, like, cosmic uh, form that is too much for humans to handle or something like that? I don't know. Um, but anyway, that, I mean, maybe that'll come up later on since they kind of went out of their way to introduce that, like what happens to an angel when they die. So it's like, maybe there is kind of a purgatory situation. Maybe it's just that once you die, because you're this celestial being, there is no afterlife for you. So you just fade into nothingness. I don't know. Would, I mean, maybe it's something we'll never really get an answer to. But overall, a very good episode. Kind of like I said, a lot of stuff kind of built up, a lot of stuff being dealt with a lot of revelations, actually, so, and I'm definitely very eager to find out more about Tulip's past, and considering this whole, like, 
Victor situation, plus like the fact of the matter is, also what's Jesse going to do? Like he's probably thinking like, oh yeah, the Cowboys been stopped, so he's probably going to be using Genesis left and right. But I think he is going to try and not use it as much because it's like, no, it has to be, it, you know, two words right, last resort type of thing. So we'll, we'll just kind of we'll have to wait and see about the whole thing. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, we'll like to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.